are called Montauk daisies and they flower when very little else is flowering and this is from one cutting we did four years ago and here you've got many maybe about a 20 bushes but they go all the way along the riverbank here they love this sandy soil So this time of the year, not much is actually surviving from the flowers in the summer, but we get all of these. So all you need is one cutting and four years later you get all of that. It's quite a nice investment, eh? And they're over the other side over there as well. We have another hedge there. So this is the hedge next to the gallery and we planted this two years ago. So this is its second season. And these ones up here, that one was destroyed by the hurricane. Look at that. The hurricane just opened it up. It snapped the branches at the bottom. These ones I just planted less than a month ago. And so those ones, we'll see what they do next year. And there's another one finishing the hedge up there. Hey, good morning. It's Vaughan at Wesco Bell Pottery in La Have, Nova Scotia. Um, I've got these three new tools from artisanpotterytools.com um, Bill Wright makes them uh, in Saskatchewan, Canada uh, and um, these are for putting feet on your pots um, I just tried them on the trimmed pieces you know pieces already thrown and then I was trimming them so uh, now I'm going to try them on soft clay pieces as I'm throwing to see whether there's an advantage to doing it then or later on when you're trimming. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll try all three tools, three different modes. So as beginners should know, uh, know it's not as easy as it looks, uh, but if you're a beginner, first thing you do is you bang it down on a dryish wheel um, with a, just a little bit of dampness, not wet. Uh, so you don't have water in between the clay and the wheel head. And then you just press down hard just to make sure it's stuck. Um, and then if you press evenly with both hands, um, and this is fully explained in my how to throw for beginners videos. You look back in my history, uh, probably about a year ago, I did uh, a whole bunch of videos where it's beginners. Um, anyway, press down with the top hand, press in with the left hand. And if you're pressing evenly, and your elbows are on your thighs, either side, resting either on your legs or on the splash pan, preferably your legs, so that you don't damage your nerves in your forearms by pressing hard on the splash pan. You press down evenly, and if it doesn't go, let's pretend it's wobbling and you can't center it. So you cone it up a little bit, two or three times it was its original height, and then you press down evenly with your hand completely surrounding the clay top and sideways and your left finger little finger will be on the wheel head and then you just try and hold it for a second and let go slowly and you end up with a hockey puck easier than it you know it looks easy but it's hard so don't be just you know put off after you've tried a few times it doesn't work you wet it again you feel for the center point and don't press all the way in straight away just feel for it and make a dimple once you've got that little dimple and it's totally on center, which means your finger isn't doing this, you push all the way down with a bit of water in there and don't go to the very bottom, pull across before you get to the bottom, leaving anything from half a centimeter to a centimeter is acceptable. And then I always pull back from the outer corner to the center and pull a little bit off sometimes. And that's recompressing the bottom of the pot from the stretching you did when you opened it up. So that evens out the, the little clay platelets to make it less stressful for them when you're firing it. You dribble water on it like I just did. You put your fingers 
and you press hard with your outer fingers and let your inner fingers opposite your outer fingers give way so that you make it narrower. Dribble water inside and outside. Same again, fingertips right to the bottom on the inside and touching the bat on the outside. And you pull up evenly, chasing the wet spot all the way up. Because if you stay too long on the same level, it'll get dry. Compress the rim with your forefinger of your left hand and let go slowly. And then, let's see, where's my sponge? There it is. This is when we're going to put the foot in. So I'm going to drill some water down. I'm not sure if that's needed or not. Let's try one of these tools. So you put it in. I'm not going to go fast at this point. We'll see if it works on the slow. And it pulls a piece off. And you let go slowly. That pulled all that off. And then I'm going to do my pull. From the bottom, sort of starting above where that tool was just used. Coming up. And let go slowly. Drag the water off the side, in other words. You're just trying to get all that water that's there off the side. The top part, I use the edge of the metal tool, it's a metal rib, just to dry that bit off. And I moved it from below, skipped piece, so I got a little double thickness edge right at the top. It's called a tankard lip. And then we get the water out of the inside. And I pull this sponge all the way up the inside to get to the top. And because this is smooth clay, I don't need to use the leather. I'm just going to roll it over the edge just carefully enough so I don't dent the piece. If you press too hard there, you'll wrinkle the clay. And then I'm just pulling it down the side to smooth off the whole thing. You want to make sure you, you don't have anything irregular in there at all. Let's see if it comes off now. There are lots of ways of taking things off the wheel. The way I do it is I dribble water very slowly with it rotating all the way around. And then that speed, I just pull the wire through. And before it goes a complete rotation, I pull towards me and sometimes it comes off that time it didn't. So I'll do that again. There you go. And then being gentle with your thumb, I'm holding the pot because I want to dent that nice foot I just put on there. You rotate it so where you can get your hand underneath and you slide it onto your hand, trying not to dent that nice foot, remember. And place it down on your bat. All right, so it's, it's a, you're able to get it off without denting the foot. All right, centering. Top hand down first, side hand in now. Top hand squashes it, left hand pushes it in. Get some water on it again as soon as it dries out and just kind of move it around until it feels like it goes into center. Once you know how to center, you won't have to cone. And then press down, pull to the side, towards you, let go slowly, move your finger to, to two o'clock, push in and down and then pull your finger to the center and that compresses that base. Water on the, t on the rim. Fingers on the outside, press hard. Fingers on the inside, rest against the wall, but they don't put pressure on too much. And you come up slowly. Water on the rim goes inside and outside. Same pull again. Fingers hard on the outside. Resist on the inside with your inside fingers, just so that you put pressure on enough so that as you put the fingers together, the wall rises. And the fingertips are at 45 degrees. Not like that, like that. And then uh, let's uh, put the shape before we do the tool this time. So I'm going to put water on the inside. I'm using the metal rib to shape it before I use the actual bottom tool. Try a different way of doing it. Experiment. Move the tool, skip a piece, dig in again. That gives you a shape for the tankard rim. Drain everything out so 
so we don't do anything to the foot until we've got all the water out so it's actually finished as soon as you do the foot. Now don't press hard there, gentle, but it gets rid of the water. I like to just attach the piece all the way down. And now we're going to try a tool that's like this. And that's how much clay came out. Use the sponge just to clean up that rough edge at the top there. There was a little bit, so you got a nice rounded edge. What I don't like there, and I wonder if I can catch it off with this tool, is the bottom, it leaves a bit of clay on the wheel head there. That was probably me, that's probably because I wasn't resting on the wheel head. So make sure the tool rests on the wheel head, because I want to make sure there's no clay on the outer bit. That's probably why the other one didn't slide off easily the first time. Dribble water all the way around. This tool is pulled tight, held to the wheel head, and with the wheel rotated slowly, you cut through. And just about before it catches all, there you go, that's it. So in other words, it's not quite one rotation, and then you time it so it perfectly catches the clay when a little bit is still stuck on the wheel head, and it usually pulls it right off. You don't want it to be dented, so I'm sliding it onto my fingers with a thumb, spread out to push the clay without it marking the bottom. So that's number three. So we've got three nice foot feet. This is damp, not wet. And I have my pugged clay, so I'm knocking it down just at an angle. And then you press in, and you press down, you press in, you press down. It should be the first motion is to press down, I got that wrong. I'd already done it when I started there, but down, in. And that means if down sticks it to the wheel, in is trying to help center it. And you hold the pressure tight until you think you've got it centered. There's a tiny wobble there, I could get away with that, but I'm going to try and get rid of it. There you go. Alright, find the center, make a dimple. There's plenty of water in mine, so I'm going for it. Push down, pull to the towards me. Let go slowly. Fingertip at 2 o'clock pull down and in towards the center to actually compress the clay in the bottom. Wet the rim so there's water inside and outside. Fingertips hard on the outside and they give way on the inside. 45 degrees right to the top. I try not to go above the length of my finger with that pull. Then you put your fingers inside and it's all the way down. That whole thing is touching. Fingertips at 45 degrees outside and press hard against your middle finger on the inside and pull up fast enough so you always get the sweet wet spot. And let go slowly at top, fingertip on the rim. And then we'll use the metal rib again to get the shape before we put the foot. I think it worked better the second the, after I got everything done. And then let go slowly. Get the water out. Pull up slowly, just enough to drag the water and smooth off the inside. Because if you don't, sometimes you'll get a bit of clay that catches and falls in there and then just lightly go down the outside. And you get this bit of sloppy clay that falls on the inside sometimes and the customer feels it and wants their money back. So don't do that. Don't let rough bits of clay fall on the inside. Okay, so the tool, we'll use a different one. I'm going to use that one. So. This time, right on the back, come in. There you go. Pull it off. There's no clay left on the back. Maybe a skinny little piece, but nothing to speak of there. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it looks nice. And the angle, is, it's got that shape. 
so you can see the foot shape that's in there from that. Now dribble some clay, water, all the way around. Pull your wire tight. I always shorten my wires because I don't like these big long wires. So I, short, I rock it around and shorten it. You can actually get two, but they're not very long if you get two out of one wire. And it comes off. Just that you have to time that so it's just exactly one revolution and then give a tug. Okay, so finger thumb on the outside, push down, it slides to your hand and it rests on your hand so you're not touching the foot. And you lift it off and place it down. Okay, let's get some other piece of clay. These are big bugs. And that's the foot you get with that one. Well, you've got the idea. These are the three tools. One's a, like a, a crescent moon, and then this one has a slightly longer shape there, and this and a smaller little crescent area. And this one has a bigger crescent area and a shorter area there. So this, these are, I uh, was just sent these by Bill Wright from artisanpotterytools.com um, and they make nice feet. So, um, so that might be something you want to put in your arsenal um, of tools. Alrighty, I'll show you them when I'm trimming. Okay, that's what we have from the tool, um, you know, when we were throwing these uh, and it's intact there's not there may be a little dent there when I was handling it um, but basically you don't have to do much to change that rough you know, get rid of the roughness this is one of Bill Wright's trimming tools which I use pretty much all the time you can kind of see that I'm starting to wear it out on one side because I use this all the time now um, so all I have to do I mean it's not a big deal at all you just smooth off your bottom And then just take the tool and roll it over the edge where you have a little mark from where you are handling it and that's it the foot is already pretty good um, what I do with my feet sometimes is just if I don't want to glaze the bottom of it I'll just use a, a pebble and burnish the bottom of it a bit. And that makes it very smooth but you don't since I still fire and glaze my pieces I don't do that to very many pieces look how well that defined foot is there very nice and then here's another thing I've shown you in another video anyway I may as well do it again if you're using a gritty clay this is recycled clay I just use my pebble on the rim too just gently roll it over the top of the rim and if you had any marks or anything it's now smooth as a baby's bottom there we go there you go nice mug there's three tools, and I'm not sure which one is which, but it's the same for all three tools. You just drag your tool from the center to the outer edge and just roll it over the lower part of that profile. So what's that, 20 seconds or less? Oh, there's, I marked it there, obviously, when I was lifting it off the wheel, but I think that won't matter. I'm not going to get rid of that little bit. Yeah, so I've done it trimming, putting the tool on, and I've also done it now with wet clay. And I don't know which I prefer. I'm just rolling it over, bringing it back, and that's it. It's a really nice foot.
One of them's a bit smaller as a profile than the other. People have asked about what's this tool I'm using to center the clay. It's called a Giffing Grip and Bailey Pottery Door uh, in Kingston, New York also make a version of it. But this is a Giffing Grip. It is very useful if you've got lots of tools to mugs rather to trim really quickly. That's the bigger of the, those trimming tools and that's a nice foot. Yeah, and that ring there will get the glaze soaking into it quite nicely so we get a little extra color change there as well. Looking a little worse for wear now that I've used them, but those are the three tools which we used. Let's get my finger out so you can see the profile better. There you go. So basically, um, you know, you can take your pick. They all work. If you actually wanted to get rid of that mark um, that I put on one of these, I don't know which one it was now. See that little mark there? I could put it back on at the trimming stage and simply take more off. I was feeling it to see whether, yeah, it's gone. So if that, you know, if you get a mark after taking it off the wheel, if you're doing these to, to the soft clay, then you can get rid of it in the trimming stage anyway. So it's another tool in your armory. They're nice tools. Um, I would say uh, it, there's a lot of changes and things you could modify this and have a double ring. I mean, there's a lot to do. You could really enhance these a lot. So, um, but yeah. If you want one, get it. Bill Wright, artisanpotterytools.com.